<laughs> Hello, and welcome to We Review Stuff, the podcast where, and this might shock you, we review stuff. My name is Fergus Halliday, and I'll be your host for this episode. Today, I am joined by a crack team of consumer tech commandos who are ready to deliver their hottest takes on three mysterious things. Two of these might be more traditional reviews, like a new iPhone. The third one, it'll be a bit of a wild card. But before we get to the good stuff, let's take a minute to introduce our squad. Charging once more into the fray, it's Anula Vivatoshka. Anula, did I say it right? No, Ferg, once again, you did not say it right. Ah, one of these days. <laughs> Next up, it's Brody Fogg. Brody, how many stars would you give this week? This week's starting out at a solid uh, two and a half. How many hours of sleep did you get? More or less than that number? Less. Oh, no. Definitely less. Finally, we've got Adam, Adam Smith. Adam, how would you rate this introduction? Thumbs up or a thumbs down? Well, I mean, you're sitting right here. You've You've made it awkward now. You know, I can't, like, very well say... Thumbs down. Terrible job, Ferg. So I guess I'll have to say thumbs up, and you're just going to have to wonder whether or not I'm being forthright. I wonder nothing. Before we get into the thick of it, let's give our listeners a little taste of what to expect. Brody, give me a hint about what you'll be reviewing this episode. I'll be reviewing a portable gaming console, but not the one you're thinking of. All right. How about you, Adam? I'll be looking at a novelty feature of a mid-range phone. And Anula, what have you got in store for us? I will be reviewing something that is very near and dear to my heart. That is intriguing, but also sounding slightly threatening? We'll see. I see how it goes. <laughs> well, don't forget to stay with us until the end of the episode, where we will rank our latest review items on the list and see if any of these new items are better than the USB-C on the new iPhone 15 or worse than the Threads app? Yeah, this list is getting weird. <laughs> Let's kick this off with Brody. Brody, let's go. All right, Ferg. So uh, what I have for you today is, uh, as I said, a portable gaming console. It's not the Steam Deck. It's not the Playdate. It is the Asus ROG Ally. Now, the thing is, I've reviewed this uh, device, but Asus took it back after two weeks. So I have this, uh, like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> lovely printout here of what you can imagine, very tactile buttons. <laughs> that's what you get if you order this off wish yes yeah this is what my asus rog ally would look like if i had one i have to ask is it black and white or did you just run out of color ink? <laughs> i just ran out of colored ink for those of you consuming this as an audio medium brody is currently holding up a uh a hastily made printout that looks to be one-to-one -one scale of Almost. The, uh, the gaming handheld he's reviewing. And he appears to have folded and stuffed the piece of paper to sort of mimic the thickness of the actual device. It's, it's, exactly. Yeah, it's got a bit of heft to it, which the Asus ROG Ally does have. Coming from somebody who's only like sort of had a passing experience with the uh, the Steam Deck, I think uh, it's a maybe a little bit lighter than the Steam Deck, but... Uh, still a lot heavier than say like your nintendo switch uh, or the play date so no crank no crank which is going to bring mm. this one down a few uh you yeah know, it automatically crank. loses points and yeah so the asus rog ally is just a new uh it's asus's sort of uh take at this portable pc trend that we're seeing and yeah it was like i had a it was a short time with the rog ally um sadly i think one marked with like a lot of disappointment my biggest gripe with the ROG Ally, okay, is that like um, it's trying to do what the Steam Deck is doing and th what the Nintendo Switch is doing without like understanding the appeal of both of those devices, which is the simplicity. So one of the benefits of the uh, ROG Ally, uh, you could see it as a benefit, is that it runs just a raw like Windows uh, 10 operating system. Yeah, we can see from the printout you're holding up. <laughs> so do you, are you telling me that I could run Microsoft Word on this thing? You could absolutely run Microsoft Word on this thing. Uh, we could do our jobs from the Asus ROG Ally. And one neat thing about it is that, yeah, plugging it into my monitor um, via a USB-C cable, I essentially could use it just as a productivity machine as well if I wanted. 
can you connect uh, like external devices to it as well? Like if I wanted to connect a keyboard, oh, for, sure. for example, to be able to type. I did exactly that thing. But really? I, I, I absolutely <laughs> did. But here's the problem. I kind of had to do that because they haven't tailored like the Windows experience at all for such a small screen. Like, so it's impossible to navigate with like joysticks and buttons and a touch screen. Mm -hmm. Those controls also never work the way that you like expect them to. So like when you're going through menus and stuff, I would be on one screen and I would press a button that would do something in like another window where a game's running and I would hear it in the background, start making all these noises. Mm. <laughs> and that's just like the entire experience. It's just like I spent more time troubleshooting over two weeks, more time troubleshooting the Rogue Ally than I did actually playing video games. Now, one benefit is, of course, like because it's such an open system, what people are excited about is the possibility for things like emulation and playing like old games that you can't play anymore uh, anywhere else, right? Um, and again, I did manage to do that. I managed to play one of my favorite video games of all time, Metal Gear Solid 4, which you can't play anywhere right now. Yeah, the Metal Gear situation is wild. That game has just never been remastered or re-released in any fashion. You can only run it on a PS3? Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly that's right. It's so oh. weird. So it's this game that's just like locked in history. Hmm. So how far back can you go with like these emulations? All the way. All the way. All the way. I just rediscovered a game that I used to play when I was 11 years old and was actually released in 1993 when I was one. And I would love to revisit it. Okay. Oh, which, which game? The game is Space Quest Five. Oh, oh, Space Quest! Oh my gosh! Yes, those all the entire Space Quest series. Just I sunk yes. hundreds of hours into them. Absolutely, but I specifically want to go back to Space Quest Five just because it was such like the full on Star Trek parody yep. that I have to. I have to go. Here's back. how old I am. I remember playing Space Quest Three when it was new. And uh, having to switch floppy disks in the middle of the game to continue playing. Oh, my God. Because our computer didn't have a large enough hard drive to store the entire game. So I had to play. Okay, floppy. Grandpa, let's get you. The <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I vividly remember about Space Quest V is uh, the scene where one of your uh, – crew members turns out to be an evil alien and is trying to vomit acid in your face and you have to dodge your head from the uh, the acid your crew member is vomiting at you. Yeah. So, Brody, you're saying that we could relive this experience? Absolutely. Now, like, of course, it doesn't have a floppy disk drive, as you can see, but... What? Through... How am I supposed to play Space Quest 3? <laughs> I know the... of no other way to do this. Yeah, let alone two floppy disks, but you can, uh, through the magic of emulation, the wonders of emulation, you could play... The entire Space Quest series. And that would actually be a lot easier than uh, my quest to play Metal Gear Solid 4, which, once again, was a, like a, a, something that took four nights to actually like troubleshoot and get running. And then I would get to the point where I would like get past the opening credits and start to move the character and the wrong ally would just completely shut down. <laughs> like, oh, wow. No, that's terrible. Yeah. On the difficulties you're having with it, Brody, I did just want to say that as someone who's messed with the ANEOS, I had much the same software problems. And I really honestly reckon it's like up to Microsoft at this point to kind of step in and just have something natively built into Windows that just makes using these devices and these form factors a lot more seamless and painful if they really want to actually crack the mainstream in the way that the Steam. I agree, works. Fergus. And even something just as simple as like, a, um, like you know, a, ta a tablet um, uh, sort of OS on there would make all the world or something, whatever they do for Surface. How would you rate it? <sighs> Look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not too fond of it at the moment. Like, I, I think if I had some more time to spend with it, I would, I would enjoy it. Uh, like, but... Again, it doesn't have that simplicity of the consoles that it's trying to be like. Brody, how many Space Quests out of five? Uh, uh, I'm going to go Space Quest 2 out of Space Quest 5. All right, Adam, what have you got for us? Um, as promised, I am uh, looking at one specific feature on a mid-range phone. And the phone itself... Oh, unprecedented. Uh, yeah, I know. No one's ever done that. Uh, the phone I'm looking at is the Oppo A98 5G, right? 
Now, I I like Oppo phones. I think they're fun and quirky, and uh, I like their design and kind of the you know the interesting stuff they do with the uh, just the profile of the camera on the back and everything. Hot agree. Yeah, I may be the only person in the world who genuinely enjoys Color OS. Like I really hi. There are dozens of us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll get together and find a way to emulate Space Quest on Color OS. But yeah, so I right out of the box, you know, uh, they've got me on side because I just I like what Oppo does. Um, but this one, what I particularly love about it is a little throwback uh, to the uh, I believe it was the Find X3 Pro, the microscope lens. I love that. I loved the microscope lens on the Find X3 Pro. I think it's so interesting that when everyone was going like space zoom, they went the complete opposite direction. Yes. But I didn't realize they were doing them on mid range now. Yes. So this phone, it goes on the Oppo web- website for uh, 649. Uh, and, you know, it's a it's a pretty decent uh, kind of mid range Android phone. Uh, but the thing that I love about it is that they've included the 40x microscope lens it's not quite as sharp as the uh the one on the find x3 pro which i believe was three megapixels this one is two megapixels but it's just cool and it actually works you know i think that was the thing taking this out of the box thinking like 40 40x microscope lens is this really going to work by God, it works. Mm. I have a microscope at home, right? <laughs> uh, my my parents sent it to my daughter as a, a present. And, you know, we, we love looking through the microscope, going through our slides and everything. This microscope uh, that I have at home goes up to uh, 400 times magnification. And so, of course, my immediate thought was, what if I put the microscope on oh, no. the microscope? Will I be able to see into the quantum realm? And? I affixed the uh, the oppo to my microscope. They told me I was mad. They said I was a fool to believe I could do this. <laughs> well, I'll show all of them. And lightning crashed behind me and everything. Turns out, if you affix a microscope to a microscope, what you get is a very good view of one microscope right yeah <laughs> I, uh, I i thought that might be where this is going but what of you it is it is you can see the inside of the microscope lens at 40x magnification mm. so that didn't work but <laughs> if i didn't have a microscope at home this is a you know it's a a pretty darn good replacement for an actual microscope and i would say that generally you know we'll look at things under 40 times magnification through our actual microscope and comparing like to like you actually get a clearer view with the uh the oppo lens than you do with an actual microscope better lighting more vivid color uh so it actually works and one of the things that I think would be the the immediate question people would ask is, well, what is the actual utility of this? What's the use case? You know? Yeah, that was going to be my question. Yeah, my counter, I guess, would be like, what's the use case of a Lego set? You know, what's the use case of a video game? It's neat and it's fun, <laughs> and I think that there's something to be said for like, do phones have to be purely utilitarian? Yes, it's a gimmick, but it's a neat gimmick and it's fun to play with. So, you know, it doesn't really need a use case beyond just, hey, look at this. That's cool. Yeah, I would agree. I think that there's uh, a huge focus these days on, yeah, trying to make your phone or any piece of tech like as useful as possible. And that's great. Like, obviously, useful things are useful. But as we've seen from things like the play date, sometimes, uh, Things don't need to be useful per se. They just need to have a crank. Or in this case, they just need to have a magnifying lens that sets it apart from everything else. Yeah, exactly. You know, and when you think about it, every every smartphone has some gimmicky stuff that they hide as uh, they, they try and market as being utilitarian. You know, like I don't think Dynamic Island is particularly utilitarian. It's just neat. You know, the, the uh, temperature 
uh, sensor the on the new Pixel 8 Pro. I I don't think it's going to replace uh, you know an actual like infrared thermometer that you would use to like measure your your own temperature, but it's kind of neat. I mean, I know that they're they're attempting to, but see, I agree with you on the the pixel. Um, I completely disagree with you on the dynamic island. You do find it practical. I think that the dynamic island is entirely going to change the way that we use iPhones and the way that apps are developed within the next you know year or so. Uh, but that is not a conversation for now. No, but... that's a that's a really interesting take, and 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 I think that you probably have like a much better perspective on that having actually used dynamic island it's like you said uh i think the thing is it's it it's neat and and it works like as opposed to the space zoom on the samsung phones which are like uh yeah why would you need space zoom um as well but it also the result kind of sucked it's just a very blurry image um so it's nice when a gimmick is like actually works as well yeah now i will say you have to you really have to uh it's it's hit and miss because you have to hold your phone between one and three millimeters away from an object to get a clear view with the microscope lens and if you have shaky hands like i do that can be a grotesque misadventure but i was still able to get some really really great views of everyday objects with it all right adam what would you rate it I would rate it 35 times zoom out of 40. And with that, we have, we have arrived at our wild card pick. Anula, what, what have you got in store for us? I don't know what this is and I'm a little scared. Oh, there's no need to be scared. Um, now, this may shock you, but this item has actually made an appearance on this podcast before. Uh, consistently. Well, now I am worried. It has been here. <laughs> It has been here uh, since the beginning, and you would have already seen it if you're watching the video. Are you all familiar with the concept of an emotional support water bottle? No. No. No? No. All right, no. well, this this one is clearly for the girls. <laughs> an emotional support water bottle is the drink bottle that you take with you everywhere and is very rarely away from you. This right here is my emotional support water bottle. But this water bottle in particular, the Pro Iron, is the perfect water bottle. Give me the features. <laughs> the specs. <laughs> so I spent a long time trying to find the best water bottle possible because I'm sick of having shitty ones that leak or ones that can't go in the dishwasher or ones that are super heavy. So I went on a huge search and I'll tell you what, this Pro Iron water bottle, it is, doesn't look very pretty, but it is the most simple and affordable emotional water bottle you could think of. How affordable are we talking? This baby is only $25.99 for the one liter version. Comparatively speaking, most other emotional support water bottles that you will see out in the world, right? They are, you know, the Yetis, they're the Stanley Cups, mm -hmm. they're the Frank Green water bottles. For an elite version of those, a Frank Green water bottle starts at 60 bucks. Whoa, yeah. whoa. Or a Stanley not, Cup, not... yeah, or a Stanley Cup is $80 for a one liter water that. bottle. Wow. Exactly. That is absolutely ridiculous to pay. For a water bottle. You could bottle. just scoop water out of the gutter. Like, <laughs> I, what are we doing? <laughs> oh, no. I think, I think if, you're, if you're scooping water out of the gutter, then you require more emotional support than a water bottle. <laughs> <give> you. <laughs> but this one, this $25.99 bargain, available on Amazon. I'll put a link in the bio. Um, <laughs> this is perfection because not only is it dishwasher safe, it is one liter. It has a clasp. You can hear it. Ooh. Oh, that Ooh. is a satisfying click. It is. So it can lock. So it's never going to spill in your bag. And it has a pop button. Ooh. Ooh. The spout is nice and small. So I tend to spill water on myself anyway. So I can't have like a big open spout. This one is the perfect size. This to me is literally the best water bottle you could possibly get without needing to mortgage half of your house in order to afford it. Anula, how would this water bottle be superior to, say, the uh, tanned and processed sheep bladders that our forebears would have used to carry around liquids? Well, I don't think that those would be dishwasher safe. 
Oh, okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's a very salient point. One question yes, I had Freddy. was, what's the uh, the straw situation? Because this was actually something I read about Frank Green's uh, bottles, was that despite the, the price, uh, lots of people were finding um, that the innards of the Frank Green bottles um, were moldy and had grown oh, all no. sorts of disgusting bacteria. Yeah, so that's that's another big problem that I have with Frank Green water bottles. I used to have one of their um, Keep Cups, which is really fun, by the way. It has like an NFC tag in the bottom, so you can just pay with your cup, uh, which is hmm. amazing to uh, surprise baristas out there everywhere. Um, but the mechanism for a Frank Green water bottle is impossible to clean. Hmm. You need to take it apart entirely, clean all of the parts separately and put it back together, and you need to pretty much do that every couple of days um, because no light gets inside of it. So it's far more likely to get mold and things like that, as opposed to this baby where there's enough light that goes through it that the mo like mold just doesn't happen on it. Yeah. To Brody's point about the, uh, the straw, uh, it, it appears that this one is sand straw. Is there a straw option? Because I often find myself consuming water in zero gravity. Uh, unfortunately, no, that is one of the downsides to this drink bottle, which I do have to, I do have to concede, like it does not have a straw aspect. Um, but because of the way that the spout is, it is straw like in the sense that you can just hold it upside down and it's not just going to like flow onto your face. How many color options are we talking here? There are three last time I checked. So you can have the red one. There is a blue one, obviously for boys. Because that's how it works. <laughs> and Colors are gendered, as we know. <laughs> yes, naturally, naturally. Um, I have the red one because I uh, identify as a problem. So. <laughs> uh, but there is also a gunmetal gray silver kind of uh, color. If you need a tactical water bottle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want something that's going to like stick in your like millennial gray apartment, then it is absolutely mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. So you've talked about using it as a water bottle. Have you tried other liquids? Is that advised? Question mark. How does it handle milk, for example? <laughs> I would uh, I would never let milk from a cow's teat pass my lips because my stomach would murder me. Um, I believe that it would work quite well for any cold liquids. I do use it at the gym for like my creatine and things like that, mm -hmm. which is great. Another upside of this drunk drink bottle that I love is that it comes with a uh, protein ball shaker, but it's not one oh, of those awesome. shitty ones. You know how they're normally like a wire, like a metal wire mm -hmm. one? This is like uh, a- painted clean. Yes, but this one is like solid plastic. Also dishwasher mm. safe, does not oh, get really? the gunky bits on it. Oh, okay. Mm. Interesting. Nifty, nifty. Yes, this ticks every single box for a drink bottle, and I would recommend that everyone buy one. Honestly, you're like your zeal for this is so inspiring. It's like taking a huge amount of self control for me to not to pick up my phone and order one right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that, Ferg. Ferg is currently yeah, scrolling his uh -huh, phone. It is. Uh, uh -huh, you'll uh -huh. find it on Amazon. All right, Anula, what would you rate this? Two liters out of one liter. All right, and with that, it's time to add these new things to our list of the best stuff. And with that in mind, I think I'm just going to throw, uh, you know, a quick dart at the board here. I I think the water bottle really impressed me. I think the water bottle is up there. I would say maybe maybe potentially above AI stickers, but below Marvel Snap, maybe even higher. Well, how what are the vibes? Yeah, I'm. It's 100 percent above Marvel Snap because uh, Marvel Snap is not necessary for survival, but water is. That's true. I feel like everyone had like a backhanded element to their appraisal of Marvel Snap, where they're like, yeah, it's really good. I can't stop playing it. It's a problem. <laughs> Whereas like the water, that's just all upside. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing problematic about this water mm. ball. But, you know, to Ferg's point, like, uh, and I'm just playing devil's advocate because believe me, I think that this water bottle belongs above Marvel Snap. But... Yes, water is fundamental for life, but to Ferg's point, you could just scoop it with your hands out of the gutter. As yeah, then you, the, your next your next review would be our healthcare system. <laughs> <laughs> I'd review it very highly, um, but yes, I'm I'm very comfortable with this being placed above Marvel Snap. Brody, what's your vibe? I was uh, uh, more positive on Marvel Snap than most. I think uh, yes, I understand it's problematic, but I. 
too have, am taken by this water bottle. I can't tell you how much I've like tried to find like the perfect water bottle in my life. So uh, I, I, I think I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna I put it above Marvel Snap. Yes. Yeah. Hey. This is so exciting. All right. So just just for reference, what is the full name of it the water bottle the again? It is the Pro Iron One Liter Water Bottle. Congratulations to the Pro Iron One Point Five Liter Water Bottle uh, for making it onto the list at a soaring number three spot. Huge. Very impressive. Huge. Huge. Next up, let's talk about this microscope lens, Adam. How are we uh, feeling? Look, I. I think it's better, like, and remember that I was an advocate for the $2.50 burger. I I was never down on the $2.50 burger, but I do think that it's better than the $2.50 burger, but has it brought me as much lifetime enjoyment as soft shell crab? No. So I, I would nestle it in between soft shell crab and the $2.50 burger. I don't disagree with you about it being better than the burger as someone who tried the burger. Uh, I, I would definitely, I could see, I could see that. Um, but I am skeptical about the soft shell crab thing. I would maybe even put it above uh, soft shell crab. I, perhaps. I do have a bit of inherent bias in this, in that I really want soft shell crab as this list grows to kind of maintain mm-hmm. its current ranking. <laughs> oh, that is a, yeah. and there is there is a tactical. That's element. a tough thing. I'm more passionate. <laughs> I'm more passionate about soft shell crab than I am about this microscope lens. Oh, that's apparent. Uh, I, but I do think there's maybe a tactical element of creating a bit of a divide between the crab and the burger. Um, like at the moment, we need some some stuff exactly. between those two. That's a I mean, Anula. I quite frankly am impressed as to how the burger is stacking up. Like it started so poorly, and to see it like sitting quite nicely around the middle is absolutely shocking, considering everyone's reaction to it. Um, it's absolutely bizarre. However. I think <laughs> I, I uh, like a hundred percent the microscope lens has to be above it uh, for a pure novelty factor. But when we're looking at like where we have placed things otherwise for the novelty factor, it's got to be closer up there to the play date. Do you guys realize how difficult, how difficult it must be to harvest soft shell crab? <laughs> I, I, mean, I got to tell you, Adam, I don't care. It, I <laughs> It feels like a one in a million shot. <laughs> How? How are they selling this for such a low price? We're all winning here. How are they selling a microscope and a phone in one for the low, low price of, what was it, $649? Yeah, you know how much soft shell crab you could buy with that? No, I don't I don't need that information in my and brain. Each, <laughs> each serving of it, each <laughs> serving of it has every right to cost more than that phone. Anyway, it's above soft shell crab. It's all right, above. so what I'm getting here... Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I like this. I, I've got. I've got some. Some. We're building a block here. Uh, Brody, what's your vibe? On okay. Uh, I was. If it was just the microscope, um, I would probably put it down further. But if we're saying that it's a microscope attached to the mid-range phone, I agree it should be higher. I think we should, could all do with more mid-range affordable handsets in our life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going above soft shell crab too. I'll get my revenge on all of you. <laughs> what are you going to do? Pelt us with soft shell crab? It won't even hurt. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> so soft. <laughs> Boy, this this would really hurt if it had an exoskeleton <laughs> loser. All right. Last but not least, Brody, talk to me about the ROG ally. Where does well, I'm going to make this easy on everybody, okay? Because... Um, I think I found what's going to split the soft shell crab and the Hungry Jack's $2.50 fifty barbecue cheeseburger <laughs> because I it, I should come above the cheeseburger because there is an audience for this thing. Um, it's too expensive. I, I believe that, um, and I had a tough time with it, but it opens up a world of possibilities. Like I said, for playing old games. Once I got it working, I had a good time. Now. I need everybody to agree with me on that before I reveal my prestige. <laughs> so I feel like you're like pitching it as a unity candidate, but honestly, you could be more ambitious, Brody. What if we put it above <laughs> how, 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 dare again? <laughs> how dare you, Ferg? I, 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 guys, I, I, if I ask anything of you, 
It needs to sp- it needs to break up the soft shell crab and the and the cheeseburger. I got to say, this is a weird pitch. We are gonna just keep having this conversation <laughs> yeah, is- if we don't split those two. We are just gonna have this conversation over and over again. So there is some value there, certainly. Now I do have one last surprise, just very quickly. So if mm-hmm. we could, uh, does anybody have any uh, like real like problems with putting the rog ally between the soft shell crab and the uh, two dollar fifty cheeseburger? I don't think so. Is it is it better than microscope? Uh, no. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, I mean, if it's advocates, not even going to fight for that. That's fine. I know. I'm not an advocate. I've uh, <laughs> I've reviewed it two out of five. Like, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan. Um, that's true. That's true. that is that's what that's my pitch. That's where I'd put it. Gang, I'm really sorry to do this to you this late in the game, but um, I'm coming off the. The number one spot. Uh, I, I got to knock the USB C out, and that is a surprise contender. The first stealth draft in Wii Review stuff. <laughs> it's a Nintendo Switch. This is illegal. This is illegal. 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 It's illegal. The greatest illegal. video game console ever made. I've not. What are you I've doing? Sp- I, I've had like five years this is with not this what, thing. This is not the format. No one listened to Brody. Now. I, this is the first stealth draft. I don't care about the rules. The Nintendo Switch <laughs> is get on there. Okay? This is the Nintendo Switch OLED. I've never, I've not spent as much time with a video game console as I have the Nintendo Switch. I love it so much. With the Nintendo Switch 2 coming soon, I thought I've got to get this on the list now before it's too late. Brody, this is completely illegal, but I will back you to put it in at there's number a, three. There's a thing, Brody, called the social contract. Okay. And and this is what keeps our society from devolving into a sort of uh, Mad Max style post apocalypse. Okay. You have violated that social contract in every conceivable way by hey. doing this. And yet I will still back the Nintendo Switch for the number one spot <laughs> on the list. Everyone cool your jets. Can I approach the desk? Sorry. You you may approach uh, the bench. Sure. Uh I will be willing to uh, let's put this on ice today, but you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Okay. It's regrettable how this all <laughs> happened. You know, if we could, if we could do it differently, we would, but it's happened now and we have to deal with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, regrettably, I have to say that although the pro iron water bottle is the perfect water bottle, water bottle, the Nintendo Switch is kind of the perfect console as far as I'm concerned, mm. and I will mm. secede the spot of the water bottle for the Nintendo Switch. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do you one better. I would say it's better than the USB-C nah. on the iPhone. i got to take out that USB-C. It, its place at number one is driving me crazy. <laughs> I'm also not willing to put this above the Playdate, sorry. I love my Switch, but I'm sorry, the, the Playdate's just pure joy made manifest. You don't have my support for a number one slot. My support would come with the caveat. I would say that, yes, I would back this at being number one on the list, but at what cost to you, Brody, for the way that, for the way that you approached it? <laughs> hey, I'm not here to make friends. I'm glad that everyone agrees that the <laughs> Nintendo Switch is the best thing we've reviewed so far, but... Look, I, I had to I had to sneak it in there somehow. I am gonna say that we had support to make this surprise twist appearance real, but not yeah. number one. That seemed like the yeah. vibe we ended. I'm up comfortable at. with that. Anula supported putting it above the water bottle. I will allow it. I don't think you have enough to get it any higher than that. Is what I'm ruling. And you don't have time to argue your case. There it is, number three. Yep, number three. All right, well, that's a podcast. If you want to try your hand at reviewing stuff, you should review us. A five-star rating and review can go a long way for a new little podcast like us, and we would really appreciate your support and feedback. Uh, and, you know, before we go, just a quick shout-out to he- where, who we are, what we do, and where you can find us. Anula, where can people follow you in your work? Personally, you can find me at Anula Palooza on all of the things, but mostly TikTok, threads, and annoyingly still Twitter. 
Adam, what direction would you like listeners to look for? You? Really, generally, you can find me on reviews.org slash AU. Uh, I write the occasional piece, but mostly I'm behind the scenes. Uh, so you can most often find me deviously tenting my fingers and saying, yes, dance, my puppets, dance. Brody, will you ever join social media again? If not, how can people follow your work? No, no, I never will join social media ever again. And uh, me too. I'm on reviews.org slash au. Come check us out. And uh, also, hey, subscribe to our newsletter, The Watch List, uh, where we share our streaming recommendations every week. Awesome. And if you want to follow me, you can find my work on reviews.org slash au. And you can follow me on threads at cvampedoz, that's C-V-A-M-P-E-D-O-Z. If you want to get in touch or you've got something you'd like us to review, slide into our DMs on any of those platforms. You can find our links in the show notes. Until next time, this has been We Review Stuff, and that is the stuff. <laughs>